Here's a quick heads up about a polynomial identity we didn't talk about before called the sum of squares. And the reason we didn't talk about it before was because we weren't talking about complex or imaginary numbers. So I've listed here the three polynomial identities which you have already memorized, right? The perfect squares, the two varieties of those, a plus b, a minus b, both of them squared. And then the difference of squares, uh, a plus b times a minus b. Those are extremely useful. You'll use them a lot. There's one more. This is our fourth polynomial identity. And this is a squared plus b squared. What does that equal as a bunch of factored terms? Well, we can figure this out now using what we know about complex numbers. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rewrite this as a squared minus negative 1 times uh, b squared. Okay, see what I did? I just factored out a negative 1. And if you ran through the multiplication, you'd see that is equivalent to this thing over here. Now, let's rewrite it again. Remember what negative 1 is? We know now this is i squared. Negative 1 equals i squared. If you remember our good old friend i equals the square root of negative 1. Now look what I've got here. Keep rewriting it. This is i squared minus b times i squared. Okay? I just combined those two terms together from this step down here. Now, let's take a look at this. You should see something very similar to our difference of squares up here when you look at this form. I can rewrite this using the difference of squares to say this. And here's, here's the big important part. This is a minus b times i times a plus b times i. This is our new polynomial identity. Okay, so we have here what's called the sum of squares. And it's that you can rewrite any two squares that are added together as uh, a, a set of complex factors, a minus bi and a plus bi. And actually, uh, this gets into another point. It's possible to factor all sorts of things that we thought were not factorable before if you use complex numbers. There's always going to be complex factors waiting for you if you choose to go into the square root of negative 1 territory. And I'll give an example. Let's do, uh, let's do an example here. Let's say I want to factor x squared, not equals, x squared plus 36, okay? Well, using this identity, I know that 36 is a perfect square of 6, and x squared is obviously a perfect square, so this factors to x plus 6i times x minus 6i, okay? So there's an example of how you would use it. Keep this identity in your back pocket. This is called the sum of squares. And for the most part, we won't see a whole lot of action from this one, but it's there.